going everybody? Well, as you can see in the background, we're still working away at revamping this whole veggie garden. We've leveled it all off. This is where I've been growing all my tomatoes and everything that I love during the spring, summer times. And we had a wonderful season with those, many seasons in fact. But now it's time to overhaul it and start raising it. And you can see in the background, I've got the raised beds, but I've also got some lower ones. So I'm not gonna have them all standing up really high, like 900 high above ground. I'm gonna have some lower ones because I've got some plants that I need to grow tall, like my tomatoes. And if I put them in a raised bed, I'm gonna need a bloody ladder. Anyway, some of these plants that I've had growing in here, like fever few that I'm sitting right next to here, or standing next to it, um, there's thyme and oregano sitting on the ground there where we dug up, it's a big bush. These have to be planted somewhere. So I'm opting to put it in this raised bed here, in this veggie pod. Um, this has got really not much in it. We've got some uh, endives growing in here on their own, self-sown, mind you. We've actually got some tomatoes. Now, I can't remember if it is the big malacca or not, but I dare say it is because they were the only ones I was really growing and I did place a couple of big tomatoes here. I remember to let them just rot away naturally. And a few months later, voila, mother nature kicks in and those seeds have germinated. So I've sown some, they haven't come up yet, partly because it's really cold and I haven't turned the heat mat on properly or haven't been turning it on. Um, but these self-sown ones here, well, they're gonna replace the ones that haven't germinated yet. Now, what I'm doing with the fever few for those who don't know about feverfew, it's registered as a medicinal plant. Um, it's, I haven't used it, but I, I actually have it for the flowers uh, so I can get the, all the pollinators in, in the garden. And we're gonna be dotting the rest of the new garden beds with lots of flowers like this. So this one's going in the middle here. Now, this is also your common name uh, known as chrysanthemum, if you like. Uh, it's got the registration for headaches, to control headaches, I suppose, or it's been known for that purpose and other um, internal purposes, but I don't know that. Do your own research on that. For me, it's great for the bees and the pollinators, and I've got something growing. Anyway, let's just bring it over here. Look, look at the soil underneath. It weighs a ton. I'm gonna clean this up. And it's loaded with snails. So fever few, tough as nails, honestly, tough as nails. I'm just gonna cut it right down so I can open up the bottom and get all these little, as we call them in Greek, malakis many. No, no, that's not the right word. This manas or golos out of my fever few because they're having a feast. So let's just cut all this down, expose what's going on inside and see if we can save the root ball and get it to revitalize again. Now, what you need to do with this is obviously treat it for shock. And the best way to treat that is with our liquid gold and that's what we're going to do once we finish planting. And it does have a slight scent to it too as well, folks. So slightly aromatic. This will just compost, I suppose, or give it to the chickens and they can scratch it into the ground. And let's find out what's growing in the middle here. Besides, look at, the, look at these. Now, if you want to control snails, you've got Eco Radicate, which is the certified organic snail bait. You've got rolled oats which snails love. Look at the so yeah, they're just gonna be living in here for the rest of their lives. They're gonna be laying babies all the time. Look, we've got babies in here too. Don't mind me. The best way to treat snails is with your foot. Well, otherwise, rolled oats is what I'm starting to like. Um, look, Eco Radicate's fantastic. It really does work. Uh, but if you can pick them out by hand, drop them on the ground and squash them. Well, get some ducks. We've got most of the snails out, if not all of them, I hope so. Uh, what we do next, folks, is tease the roots a little bit. You can hydrate it if you want, but not too much. You don't want it to be sloppy. This is really dry soil, by the way, underneath. This is where it's been growing. And it's, this is in our middle garden bed. Now, be it all dry, this is the organic matter that I've been adding, the compost, the planting mix, and you can see how it's brittle. If it wasn't dry, this would be gorgeous. This is really, it really is good organic food here, or soil, but unfortunately it's dehydrated. So we're gonna plant it in this raised bed. Now this raised bed is what I've added my, our straw underneath, our cocoa, compost, and planting mix on top, and then straw on top. And you can see the, the straw's all gone now. We've got to re-top dress this. But I'm gonna plant it into this bed here. And this will be the first time I'm actually gonna dig up a section large enough like this to inspect what's going on underneath. So this is probably nine months old probably a year. Um, I've given it a couple of feeds, not as often as I should, uh, but admittedly I haven't been growing much in here. You can see the broccoli is just pushing up little broccolinis and I dare say because they're a little bit exhausted, insects will be attacking them so the bricks level on this will be quite low for the condition that it's looking at. 
but admittedly I haven't grown a hell of a lot in here either. Just the broccoli that's gone to little broccolinis and going to get pulled out or cut down to the ground. So let's dig this up and see what's going on. I'll just do it by hands, I think. <laughs> no, I actually do need this. Okay, crack it open. It's nice and moist underneath there. Nice, friable soil. Let's dig a big hole here, don't we? There's the cocoa underneath. See the cocoa there? That's our planting mix and compost on top. Nice and clean. Where's the life? Is there any life in here, folks? There's got to be something. Huh? Well, the question is, if there were worms, where are they now? That's me. Just uh, look at that. This is... Uh, They've got this little frame here, which can be a bit of a nuisance. It's a little bit shallow here, so where am I going to go? So there's a frame there. I'm going to have to plant it on this side because that's in the way and that's an old lettuce. And look at that. Look, 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 look. There's the worm. And that's a dead piece of lettuce root. And you can see they're actually feeding on it and that's decomposing. So I shouldn't have pulled that out, but I had to pull it out because that's where I'm planting. So let's just push all this back in here. Oh. We've got worms everywhere, there they are. They're hiding inside. So we've got plenty in here, folks. That's a good sign. All right, now the way these things work here, these are raised beds, folks. They've got framework just for reinforcement. And what you've got to do is basically, and I'm just, look, I'm just looking for my worms at the same time. There are here a lot of juvenile worms. They've got a frame down in the middle here. So you're meant to be planting on this side here and then on this side. So if you can imagine this as one square meter, You've got one, two spaces of planting for deep roots, and then here you can plant some shallow stuff, things that don't have a really deep root system. So this, as you can see, uh, admittedly, it's not a deep root system, but we want to, it to go downwards rather than, you know, sideways only. So we're gonna open this area up. We're gonna have to take this little baby out, get this out of the way. Now, is this good aggregation? Have a look at that. How well, look, hey, have a look at that. Ah, oh, bugger me. The suckers are in there already. Have a look at them. All right, bye-bye for those. And what we were talking about here is the soil, the quality of the roots, and you can see how it's all clinging together. It's holding together. It's not just pulling apart. So that tells me we've got great microbiota going on here. You know, the activity of life in the soil is good. And being a raised bed, it actually has little holding sort of troughs at the bottom here. So it holds water right at the bottom of it which allows for the plants to wick the moisture up as they need it. Now we're going to drop this into this space here and you can see I'm trying to open it up so I can spread the roots out. I don't want to tangle them up under each other. I'll open them up like that and hopefully, well I'm sure it will take, it's going to need another prune on top. It's wilted because I left it out in the bloody sun and I went back inside, started doing other things and forgot about it for a day. But I'll bring it back to life. Why I'm breaking that up is just to see what's going on in those little clumps, folks. That's all I'm doing. So, slightly top dress it like that and just carefully sort of use your fingers as a rake. You can use a stick if you like to sort of push it in and just fill in those little cavities underneath the roots, especially if you've got a larger plant where the roots are quite rigid and you can't get the soil in there. A little bamboo stick or a twig will really help in being able to uh, push the soil down and fill up those cavities because you don't want any, any air pockets in there. And don't press it down too firm. You don't want to do that straight away. You want to give it a good water and allow it to settle down on its own accord. And that way it, it allows the roots to be able to push through the soil and the roots will grow through it regardless, but it will be a lot quicker for it to settle in if you don't push it down with your fingers. If it's a large plant with a strong sort of root systems, by all means, knock it down and get it out of the way. Now before we water this in, let's just drop this one back into the uh, into the bed as well, in this section here. And a water. Oh, I put Ike Butch in here too, didn't I? Oh well. Now I've added Ike Butch and liquid gold into this watering can because I was thinking about this, um, but when I referred earlier, when you're transplanting plants, liquid gold is really all you need um, for seedlings. Uh, if they've been transplanted and they've been shocked into anything, start off with the liquid gold, give them a couple of weeks and then apply your eco butch on all small seedlings. Uh, but plants like this, like the fever few and any sort of plant that you're transplanting from one pot to the ground or from the ground to another space, if it's a large plant, liquid gold 100%, that's your seaweed. 
Uh, and our seaweed is 100% seaweed. There's no additives into it. There's nothing in it. It's cold press. That's what I call it, like extra virgin olive oil. So you're going to get quality results. So liquid gold, your plants when you finish transplanting. If you put a little bit of eco bush and you want to, well, just do it at half strength. It won't hurt the plant. And do it on a day where it's below 20 degrees, 25 degrees, I should say. And that way you're pretty safe. So if you've got to do any transplanting, well, now's the time to do it. Don't wait any longer. I'm going to pull out a couple of more trees. Uh, we've done all the rest of them. Taking them out, that is. Now it's time to plant the rest. So check out our website, vasilisgarden.com. Our new outlets uh, in Elizabeth and Bulleen are online live, and you'll be able to start shopping from their store the following weekend, folks. Uh, in the meantime, all our other outlets are up and running as well. So take advantage of the great specials. We've got some big specials coming up. So the black grit, superfood, and all the rest. It's all on vasilisgarden.com. From me, Vasily, till tomorrow. Bye, Desi.